Hello, I'm Ian George. This is Richard Dunn, Maths Consultant, and Anne Farrell, Maths Coordinator at St Gregory's Primary School. We're going to look back at Anne's lesson and we're going to look at how Anne has approached division in her class. We'll also look at how other teachers from other schools have approached division. And we're going to start this by looking at 6 divided by 2. We're going to look at it and wonder how many piles of 2 cups. Ready to look? Ready? Because here's a pile of 2 cups. Here's a pile of 2 cups. This is a fascinating methodology, not yet adopted by all schools. Let's take a look at it in relation to what's happening in other schools. Probably do this practically with cubes or with pictures um, and have two groups and then share them out. So one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you and one for you. I would share the apples between each boy. So Ali would get one apple. So we've done that apple. Salman would get another apple. I'll give another apple to Ali. And the last apple will go to Salmon. How many apples does Ali have? And the answer would be three. I'd also talk about it in terms of grouping and making groups of two. One group of two until I'd got six and asking how many groups of two they were. And that would also help with looking at the multiplication and how that links the, to the division at the same time. Initially, when we look at division, it's usually sharing and grouping that are the two ways that children will be introduced to division. It's interesting that there, there are two consistent approaches. There's, there's sharing yeah. and grouping displayed by both teachers. Yeah. Yes. And the other thing is, which was really good, was they all wanted to start off with practical apparatus, which when you're working with very young children mm. introducing this idea of division is very important. The way Anne introduces division is very highly mathematical. And it's highly mathematical because you're very focused on the division sign as having a meaning in yeah. itself. Now, if you notice the, the work you generally see in division, there's a quite a lot of emphasis on that, which may be counters or pencils or whatever, mm -hmm. and a lot of emphasis on that. Now, these are the concrete objects in whatever form mm -hmm. they're used. But, of course, that seems to be neglected. And of course, what we're working on, isn't it, is that it's that which is the really important thing. Yeah. And every child yeah. understood that. Every in, child in understood it, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. But is there a problem then with children understanding that as sharing or grouping? Well, the, I think the major point is that we don't want to confuse young children with a whole variety of ways of looking at it. If we, if we can stick, as you did, with mm -hmm. one particular way, consolidate that, and then later through the act of reasoning to, to make other judgments mm -hmm. about it, then that's, mm -hmm. that's much better. And that brings us on nicely to the next part of mm -hmm. what we're going to look at, which is in part of your lesson, you introduced the calculation three divided by a mm -hmm. half. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'd also like to look at how other teachers from other schools approach the same calculation. Change it into um, a, a half cup. So we're going to change it to a half cup. There's half cups left. Shall we do that? Let's have a look. So how many parts of a half cup we've got? Six! Yeah. Oh, well done. The first group of a half takes us to a half. The second to one. Three divided by a half is an exceptionally difficult concept for a year of three pupil to understand. It would only be taught or introduced to an exceptionally high achieving pupil. The way that we would do this is along a number line. In year three we don't teach three divided by a half. If I had to teach three divided by half this is how I would teach it. I would have three apples. Now, how many halves do I have all together? One, two, three, four, five, six. Three divided by a half, again, is not something we'd cover with the whole of the class. We would look at it maybe in 
um, year six with the target group, um, the level fives. We can see that there's a consistency, fractions and division can't be done at year three. I've already shown you that they can, the children can do it, uh, it's having a belief uh, that you can do these sort of things, but of course the children will have been introduced to a half as a concept anyway, using the cups in addition and in subtraction, so that is not going to hold any fear for the children, and so it slips in quite naturally, they'll have been adding and subtracting halves from whole numbers in any case, so when we come to move on to division, it's part of our maths. Using fractions is part of our maths. Mm -hmm. so, so do you think it's a, it's a matter where uh, teachers talk about the exceptionally able at, at certain year groups mm -hmm. to be able to cope with these mm -hmm. concepts? Mm -hmm. the, the, the capability really comes down to being able to remember the strategies as opposed to focusing on one particular strategy. In a sense, you're, you're using this particular representation to make it an inclusive curriculum. I think so. Uh, yes. Rather, rather mm. than accepting too early that you remove some people from mm -hmm. access to it. Mm -hmm. You say, what method can I use which will make this possible for all children? Yes. We sometimes perhaps look too carefully for differences among pupils rather than looking for those things that are mm -hmm. rather the same uh -huh. mm -hmm. among pupils. And whilst you're using this and you're able to use some aspect of mm -hmm. exciting whole class teaching, mm -hmm. then you're working on what I think mm -hmm. is, is the, the entitlement curriculum. Mm -hmm. And in the second part of your programme uh, that we've seen, you started to work with the children uh, with division and bigger numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to look at how other teachers uh, approach bigger numbers and division as well. Mm -hmm. okay. In year three, 600 divided by 200 isn't something that I'd really touch on with my class, but definitely further up key stage two, that would be something that they'd focus on. In year three, we wouldn't normally be teaching larger numbers like 600 divided by 200. Division is a very difficult concept for the children to understand. However, with an exceptionally higher achieving pupil, we would want to extend them and we would teach it using the number line. With that similar pattern, I would say 600 divided by 200 equals what? Now, I'm going to cover up the zeros. What am I doing? And they should be able to tell me I'm dividing by 100. So the answer would be 3. Here's a pile of 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Right, we're going to look at it and wonder. Right, how many piles of 200? Kieran, can you do that for me? How many piles of 200? Well, I think there's some very interesting strategies there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm particularly interested in uh, covering up the zeros, mm -hmm. uh, and I can see some link with the, the methods mm -hmm. that you were using, mm -hmm. Anne. I think ultimately we're wanting children to, to use bigger numbers, aren't we? Children are naturally fascinated by big numbers. You can't say just because we're five, I don't know, I have no concept of saying a hundred. I mean, in actual fact, they'll deal with bigger numbers. They'll talk about millions and zillions quite naturally in their ordinary and everyday mm. language. And it's not something I think we should restrict them to. I mean, it was really interesting to see that, they, yes, they started off with a small calculation, but readily built it up into the T numbers and the hundred numbers, which is very similar to what, to what we do. In the way they were telling us, I mean, they were only illustrating. What yes. They were doing. It wasn't being related back to the, any concrete object or mm -hmm. any image like yes, you did. Yes, yes. What interested me about Anne's lesson, because I hadn't done it before, is the way you're using a single cup mm -hmm. To represent hundreds. That's right, yes. yes. Well, I got the children to, because they're used to sort of um, using their mathematical brain, right. um, sort of when we were thinking of you looking mm. at small numbers, now we can think about bigger numbers because we know this, we know something else. Yes. Well, what if? Yeah. And of course, that question's really important in maths, yeah, isn't right, it? Yeah, what yeah. if? Yeah. What if this cup represented? Yeah. Could we, And then it made it easy. They were flying through. Oh, this is easy, I can mm. do that. But they've got a picture of it in front of them. Yeah. You know, all oh, right, that cup is 100. Well, if I've got two, then it's 200. There's a technical detail which mm. might be worth bringing out is that when we're talking about six and we're thinking about six of those things mm -hmm. called cups, then when we move on to the thousands, we're thinking of six of those things called thousands. 
-hmm. And as far as the children are concerned, that is the mathematical spelling That's right, of, right, of yeah. thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at six, in a sense, six mm -hmm. pores, thousand. So that when they divide it by two, or those things called thousand, it takes the same pattern as you were using mm -hmm. with the single cup. That's right. Uh, As the children progressed through the school, they would have been they'd experienced a range of methods of dividing, um, starting with repeated subtraction, moving through to division approximation, uh, the expanded method, and then in year six, they would have looked at the standard formal method. As they progress through, we would encourage them at all times that when they are faced with a division calculation, that they should choose the method they prefer using. The idea at one stage when people are recommending having a whole range of methods, say for division or subtraction, yes. was the idea that at some stage each child said, ah, I've got it, and then got some idea, say, of division by a process of what we call induction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're suggesting mm -hmm. here is that we teach them something really well, mm -hmm. and then we branch out from there, from that confidence and competence, into examining different methods. That's right, because yes. if, you, if, you, if you give children a problem that you're asking them to discuss mm. and to work out, mm. if they've all got a different method, there's no common language between any of mm. them. Look, Richard, isn't, isn't there a danger with this approach? If you're taking away a choice of methods, what about the child who, who really doesn't get it that mm. fundamental one way? Um, I actually don't accept that the, there's a child who doesn't get it. Because this is so carefully structured. Mm -hmm. it, this is what, what we should be doing as teachers is to find ways of so representing maths to our pupils that it becomes clear. They'll be so engrossed and so this, this idea will be so well embedded mm -hmm. in them, um, you know, whether it's sort of in, in a play situation and reception all the way through to year one and year two. I, I don't think you would find a child who would find it difficult and wouldn't get it. It has to be a consistent approach. It has though. to be a yeah. consistent approach. So you could look at number lines mm -hmm. and the use yes, of number absolutely. lines yeah. mm -hmm. if you were coming from this point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. You will, in fact, link it up with all kinds of ideas, mm -hmm. won't you? Adding on and, yes. take, mm -hmm. and, and, and counting back and, and so on. So the knowledge that we have mm -hmm. and the methods and strategies that we're using at the moment mm -hmm. uh, still have some viability. Absolutely. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Depending yeah. on where they're coming yeah. from. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Because what you, what you saw our, our teachers talking about were perfectly valid ways of conceiving. Mm -hmm. Yes. But whether mm -hmm. it was pedagogically a good idea to offer those variety of things that adults can do is another matter. At that time? At that, yes, okay. absolutely, yeah. 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 So I'd like to thank all the teachers who contributed uh, from their schools. I'd like to thank Richard and Anne. Uh, hope you found it interesting and we'll see you next time. Thank you.